Good morning everyone. Um, I'm Angelo Langamla sa and my report was all about the four versions of cavity mutiny. The cavity mutiny. There are four versions related of the cavity mutiny. These are the the Jose Montero Y. Vidal and Governor General Rafael Esquerdo version. Number two, the Spanish version. And the number three, the Trinidad Pardo de Tavera version. And number four, the in Monday or in Mon Plash Plashut version. The Jose Montero Y. Vidal and Governor General Rafael Esquerdo. The Esquerdo version. The version of Jose Montero Y. Vidal and Governor General Rafael Esquerdo was more beating. In this documentation of this event, Montero referred to it as a revolution, an attempt by the angels to topple down the Spanish government in the Philippines. On the other hand, Esquerdo used this event as a vehicle to implicate the Filipino priests who were then active in the secularization of Filipino of Philippine parishes. Esquerdo, in his report to the Spanish king, pointed to the intention of the rebels to topple down the Spanish government in order to put in power a new king in the persons of Jose Burgos and Jacinto and Father Jacinto Zamora. He stressed in, in his report that the Filipino priests urged the natives to support the revolution which they were assured of victory since God was on their side. Montero and Esquerdo believed that the cavity mutiny of 1872 was planned earlier that it was a conspiracy among the educated, the mestizos, the lawyers, the citizens of Manila and Cavite and the Filipino priests. This stated that the revolution would be the explosion which would come from intramuros and since the date January 20, 1872 coincided with the feast of the uh, Our Lady of Loreto, which the district Sampalo was observing the rebels mistook the explosion coming from the fireworks. For the signal, they were waiting for the start of the revolution. Thus, the 200 contingent under the command Sergeant La Madrid started the revolution by attacking the Spanish officials they saw and captured the arsenal. The report of Montero and Esquerdo further stated that when Esquerdo learned of the uprising, he immediately dispatched the reinforcement to Cavite which made possible the quelling of the uprising. They also added that the reinforcement from Manila which the rebels were waiting failed to come. Thus, those who instigated the revolution were killed, including Sergeant La Madrid. The Gomborza was subjected to investigation through a court martial and were sentenced to death by Garoti, Joaquin Pardo de Tavera, Antonio Marijidor, and Jose and Pio Basa, and other lawyers were suspended from practicing their profession, were arrested and sentenced to life imprisonment in the Marianas Islands. The Trinidad Pardo de Tavera version. In this version, from the point of view of Trinidad Pardo de Tavera, the Cavite event was just a mutiny of the natives, soldiers, and workers in the Cavite arsenal who were disheartened because of the removal of their privileges which they used to enjoy earlier. He put the blame on his on his cardo for his pa policies such as the removal of the privileges of the arsenal soldiers and workers and the prohibition to put up school of arts and trades for the Filipinos. The report of Tavira stated that on January 20, that on 20 January 1872, about 200 men comprised of soldiers, laborers of the arsenal and residents of Cavite, Headed by Sergeant La Madrid, rose in, rose in arms and assassinated the commanding officer and Spanish officers in sight. The insurgents were expecting supports from the bulk of the army, but unfortunately, that didn't happen. The news about mutiny reached authorities in Manila. Gener General Esquerdo immediately ordered the, ordered the reinforcement of Spanish troops in Cavite. After two days, the was officially declared subdued. 
Tavira was convinced that Izquierdo used the Cavite mutiny as an attempt of the Filipinos to topple down the Spanish government and presented it as blown up conspiracy involving not only the local soldiers but also the natives of Manila and Cavite, most especially, specifically the Filipino priests. The Inmonde or Edmond Plasio version. In 1887, the Inmonde shoot a Frenchman who was residing in Manila at the time the event happened, published in the Review this Mondays, his version of the Cavite mutiny. His account was a dispassionate one which referred to Vera version. It stated that the Cavite mutiny happened because of discontent of the arsenal workers and soldiers in Cavite, fort in which it originated from the order of the Government is Gerdo. On January 2018, which they received their pay, the workers fund the uh, amount of the taxes and their corresponding fee in lieu of the forced labor deducted from their pay envelopes. 40 infantry soldiers and 20 men from the artillery took over command of the fort of San Felipe and fired cannonades to announce their, uh, their which was short lived one. Apparently, the mutineers had expected to be joined by their comrades in the 7th Infantry Company assigned to patrol the Cavite Plaza. But when they beckoned to them, their comrades did not join them and instead attacking them. Terror striking the rebels bolted the gates and decided to wait for morning expecting support from Manila. Plashot in his report also focused on the execution of the pre three priests, Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora, which he personally witnessed. Hello, my name is Darskinet Bitenol. I am reporting the reduction of Sarasat. Chapter 3, The Retraction of Sarasat One of the most controversial issues in the Philippine history is the retraction of Sarasat. Until today, this retraction issues is a subject of discussion among historians, researchers, and students of history. What is really the truth behind this controversy? Results dove on the Catholic Church. The publication of Results to novels, the No Limitang Hire and El Filibusterismo, made Rizal a target of the era and persecution of the friars. Clearly written on the page of these two novels were results attack on the friars and practices of the Catholic Church. He was declared as excommunicado, which means that he was expelled from the Catholic Church and thus could not receive its sacrament. In his novel, No Limitang Hire, Rizal expressed his doubts about the teachings of the Catholic Church on the salvation of mankind through philosophy of Expressing further the argument of one's salvation, Rizal speaking through Philosophontasio continued. Father Pablo Ramon, Dean of Ateneo de Municipal, and Father Federico Fabra, a teacher of Rizal, tried to bring Rizal back to what to them was the right path. Right path. Rizal, what the two priests believed to be the right path was not the right path for him. Thus, as a result, their supreme effort to persuade and convert the unfortunate failure proved unavailing. During his exile in the Pitan, Father Pablo Pastoral, head of the Jesuit, requested Father Antonio Obak, Paris priest of the Pitan, to accommodate Rizal in his mission house. In Rizal would like to stay with him, Father Obak agreed. Kula shot in his book. Why did they choose Father Sanchez to carry out this mission? Father Pastor, according to Kulas, was an erudite man, a Finnish scholar, surely with his vast learning. Father Pastor should have no difficulty whatever in persuading Rizal to return to the fold and enjoy the inestimable treasure of faith. The two protagonists debate brilliantly with all the eloquence of passion and the strength of conviction of them. Just this withdraw heavily 
on his armory of faith and the calamban of his artillery of reason Rizal was firm in his belief that there were abuse committed by the first and that they did not preach the truth about Christianity and that the Filipinos were abused through the use of the religion. Thus Rizal decided to forget about his plan of marrying Joseph and try and they get lived together as husband and wife. They lived together happily for four years. And mindful of the unkind words of people and the unceasing attack of the father of Bach, then in pulpit, Ritana wrote on his episode in the line of Rizal. Rizal remained an impenitent pre thinker despite the attack and condemnation of society. The beginning of the retraction of controversy. When and how did this? controversy of the retraction of Rizal's start. He had it published in, a, in an article entitled La Muerte Cristiana del Rizal, which he claimed he published to prove that Ritana document was not original. The issues become more confusing when Father Manuel Garcia revealed that he accidentally found the original retraction document among the files of the Archbishop. Analyzing the retraction issues, are, they, are the Jesuits telling the truth about the retraction document of Rizal? If it is true that they were, they have an original retraction document, why did it take them so long before they revealed about it? Why did they not do it immediately after the execution of Rizal or even before he was executed? If he really retracted, why did they allow his execution to push through? Why did they not do something to prevent it? They were claiming that Rizal returned to the fold of, of Catholic faith. If it is, was true, why was Rizal buried in the most despicable, despicable manners? He was buried without a coffin. Rizal's name was entered in the list of those who and without repenting their sins. If he, re if he retracted, therefore, he repenting he for her sin. If he had sins, from the point of view of the Catholic Church, why was his name included in the list? And why are there the reversion of retraction of the national hero? Which one is true? Is he really retracted? One must read between the lines stupidities and vulgarities with which Father Bolaguer must have loosened for Rizal. Father Bolaguer did what Spanish Fire did in his day, frame a story so as to discredit a Filipino and accidentally to give himself a Spaniard, waited for a marvelous conversion. A perusal of the three retraction document is Necessary to give the student of history a chance to make their own analysis of their controversial issues.